You wanna design thumbnails like some of the best on YouTube? It's not that difficult. I'm gonna show you my technique to create stylized YouTube thumbnails using Adobe Firefly and Photoshop. Now Adobe just released their next gen Firefly 2, which has some incredible capabilities, one of which is the text to image, which I'm gonna show you. All right, so I go to firefly.adobe.com and it gives me the options to use any of these different generative AI tools. So I'm gonna use the text to image tool. And it gives you a bunch of examples here. Like if you wanted to generate this, for example, you would click on it and it would tell you what prompt is used for that. Or you could just go and type your own prompt in. So this prompt in particular shows you these different tags that it uses. You can see it's very specific. So model version, I have Firefly image two, which is this one, it's in beta and it's what we're gonna use. This is the original one. Then in aspect ratio, you could choose landscape, portrait, square, or widescreen. So I'm actually gonna choose widescreen for my thumbnail as that's the proportion for a YouTube thumbnail. So I'm gonna make sure it stays on photo. Then you could adjust the visual intensity or the strength. So then if you click on reference image gallery, these are the reference styles that you could use. So if you click on one of these styles, the image will change based on that style. And then from here, you have your popular effects here, hyper-realistic, digital art painting. There's tons of different ones you could use. I'm actually not gonna go through all of them, but I'll show you a few examples and then I'll move ahead with my design. Scrolling down, there's also color and tone. So you can make this a toned image, monochromatic, black and white. You could change the lighting. You can make it studio light, golden hour, dramatic lighting. Or in composition, you could change it from shallow depth of field, wide angle, landscape photography, etc. So tons of different options, tons of settings to customize. Let's go ahead with our design. So I have a video here of a hot dog bar on a beach, and I kind of want to make a visually intriguing thumbnail. So I took a screenshot from my video. So I'm going to go to my match and I'm going to click on upload your image. And I'm actually going to select that screenshot and I'm going to hit continue. And then it's going to check for some copyright stuff. That's okay. All right. So I'm going to start by making my aspect ratio 16 by nine. And I'm going to show a few examples before I get into my actual design. As I showed you, I have my uploaded image here. I'm going to start by selecting digital art, hyper realistic, and I'm going to type in my prompt here. All right. So this is what it generated. Hyper realistic looks really cool. So then if I want to make it, let's say layered paper. Now let's generate that. And now it has that paper-esque look to it, which I really like. So then if I go to all here, actually, let me remove these styles and we'll say modern art, geometric. Let's take off layered paper and then we'll do scroll down to this. We'll do shallow depth of field. This one's really nice. The shallow depth of field, kind of a similar composition based on my style reference, very geometric. So if you take them all off, it just auto generates it for you. And then it selects the style automatically based on your style reference. So now I'm gonna move forward with my actual design. So I'm gonna select photo. I'm gonna go to materials. I'm gonna choose claymation. And I'm gonna choose cartoon. And I think that's good for effects. If I go down to composition, I'm going to choose shallow depth of field again. And I'm going to type in a nice long prompt to try to be as specific as possible. All right. So now you can see the different angles of the truck. I like this one a lot. So I'm going to download it and this one too. So then from here, if you wanted to use generative fill and you didn't want to use Photoshop, you could use the built in generative fill in Firefly. You click on generate. And you could upload that image. And from here, you could just erase parts of your image. So I'm going to erase this and I don't want this van to be blue. I want it to be white. So once I have it erased, I'll just type in white van in the background and then enter. And you can see a few options pop up. So that's pretty much the extent of the generative fill browser version. I'm going to jump over to Photoshop and I'm actually going to edit that same photo, but I'm going to do a little bit more to it to make it a YouTube thumbnail. Okay. So I have my image in Photoshop. I'm going to start with the end of this hot dog that looks a little funky. 
So I'm gonna click on generative fill and I'll type in end of hot dog and see what comes back. Okay, so now I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna type in hot dog Chicago style. There we go. Now we're getting into something. All right, I like this a lot. So now let's actually go and add a pineapple here since we're on the beach. It's kind of Hawaii theme to it. So I'm gonna type in pineapple on table. Okay, cool. And then I'll let's add some ketchup. Let's use that one. Now I'm just gonna clean up our layers. So I'm just gonna hit layer, merge visible. And then I'm gonna click on select and mask and I'm actually gonna select the blue part of my van as I did before. And I'm gonna make this a white van. All right, there we go. That looks good. And I'll just change the window a little bit here. Okay, so from here, now I'm gonna add my text for my YouTube thumbnail. So I'm gonna actually choose kind of a bold color within my scene. I'm gonna enable stroke and I'll add a drop shadow. A little smaller. Scale it up a bit. So from here, I actually wanna tweak my frame a little bit. So I'm gonna show you the generative expand feature to make more room for my text and expand my scene a little bit. So I'm gonna grab the crop tool here, or I hit C, making sure generative expand is selected above. And I'll basically expand my image with the crop tool, paying attention to my composition rule of thirds here along the way. And once I'm ready to expand, I'll hit the enter key and then it will generate. That's looking good. And then from here, I'll reposition my text. So I got this little circle design from my stock image source. So I'm gonna use this to kind of draw attention to the hot dog, but also making it feel like it's part of the scene. I'm gonna select my bottom layer here. I'm gonna hit select and mask. And then I'm just gonna go to select part of the plate in the edge of the hot dog here. So now I'll go back to my circle layer with that selected and then I'll hit delete. So it kind of goes under the plate behind the hot dog, feels a little more like it's part of the scene, adds a little more visual interest to it. So there you have it. If you have a hot dog truck, I got a nice thumbnail for you.